my name is Andrew and this is Rogue Wrenching. I have been absent from the channel for a little while now because I've been working on this giant project that is this paver patio behind me and it extends all the way over to the house. So huge, tremendous project that I've been working on. I haven't had any time for making videos, but I wanted to jump on here real quick today and make a quick video to talk about paver edging. Paver edging is super important because without proper paver edging, you can run into issues like the edge paver kind of falling off the edge. You'll see separation in your pavers. So I want to talk to you today about paver edging, what the best way to do it is, and some things that I've learned kind of along the way because there wasn't a lot of content out there when I first started this project on how to do this and do it right. So let's dive right in. One of the keys to success is using the proper edging. Normal landscape edging won't work, you need paver edging. What I'm using here today is this Dymex paver edging. This is available at Home Depot for about $1.50 per linear foot, and I was able to find it on Amazon for closer to 90 cents per linear foot. So I will link that in the description below if you guys are working on a project. Definitely check it out from Amazon because it's, like I said, substantially cheaper than buying from Home Depot or other retailers like that. The other thing when you're doing a project like this is you want to make sure that you're using uncoated steel nails or spikes. These are 10 inch spikes that we're using here. The Arizona dirt here is fairly hard, so 10 inches is plenty for what we're doing. And the big thing is you want uncoated. You'll see there's a little bit of rust built up on these nails already, and that's what you want because over time, as the nail rusts, it locks into the ground tighter, and we want a good secure lock. So when you're doing paver installs, you should have your base layer, your gravel, extend beyond the edge of your pavers, and obviously the same with your sand as you're setting your pavers. So the first step in doing this is gonna be take a hose and wet down the area so the sand is damp. You don't want it run, you don't want enough to erode the sand, you just wanna make the sand damp so that it will hold its shape when you cut it. There are a number of tools that we're going to be using in this install. So the first is I'm using a Milwaukee Hackdall to trim the Dymax edging to length. You can use a hacksaw or any other saw to cut it. It's plastic, it cuts really easy. It's just the power tool that I have on hand, so I'm using it. You don't need it for this job. So once the sand is wet, we can come in with our finishing trowel and cut the edge as close to the pavers as we can get it, as you see here. And the reason we do that is because we want this edging to make actual physical contact with the paver, but we want the edging on the bottom to be resting on the gravel and not on the sand. So we want to cut the sand straight down and then pull it back and away from the paver. That way there is just rock, gravel, packed gravel underneath that it's being nailed into, and then the edging sits straight up and flush against the pavers. You want this edging to come at most halfway up the side of the paver. You only need about a half an inch of overlap on the paver, so it shouldn't come to the top of the paver. You just need it to retain the bottom edge of the paver and keep the sand in place. So once the edging is set in place, once the sand is moved, then we go into spiking. So with these spikes, what I like to do is I like to pound them in at a slight angle. And then as I get in about three inches, kind of push them back to straight like this to push that edging tight into the pavers. You want to get this as tight as you can with the pavers, but you don't want to push it so tight that the top edge rolls back. You want the bottom flat on the ground and the top edge pressed firmly against the pavers like this. When you spike this, you want to spike it about every foot to foot and a half. So I'm going every four holes as kind of a minimum, but then I like to go every other hole at either end. That way the ends are secure. So this shorter run is gonna have more spikes than you have to have, but I would prefer to be overkill and I bought spikes in bulk so that I would have enough to be overkill. On the subject of spikes, I bought these spikes on Amazon and they were, I wanna say like 13 or $14 for 45 10 inch steel spikes. Again, you want bare uncoated so that they will rust when you put them in the ground. These spikes are almost three eighths of an inch diameter steel, so it's gonna take a very long time. You have decades before these spikes actually rust into nothing. And in that time, as they rust, that rust locks in with the soil and holds them even tighter than just a smooth spike would. So don't use nylon, make sure you're using bare steel spikes. If you end up with a little bit of a gap, it's okay. Just take a little bit of sand and kind of fill in on the edge of the gap like this. It's pretty straightforward, nothing too crazy. You don't need to pack it in there or anything. Just enough to keep that paper from walking around on its own. So once you're done, you can go ahead and finish off with dirt, just a little bit of dirt, and then kind of pack it with your foot like we just did there, and you're done. So at this point, the next step is to sweep in the polymeric sand, which I will do another video on that at a later date. So if you're interested in seeing that, definitely subscribe for that video. In summary, to wrap up, you're gonna need a tool, a way to cut the edging, you're gonna need edging, and you're gonna need these big spikes. So I will link all of that stuff in the description below if this is a project that you guys are getting ready to tackle on your own. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up so that it can spread to more people. Share it with your favorite friend that's doing a project like this, and we'll see you guys in the next video.